Hello, and welcome to Women With Books. I'm your host, author Lindsay Emery. Welcome to September. Um, I cannot believe that we are looking down the barrel at the end of the year, but this is very exciting because September is when, uh, for the past three, four years, I have co-hosted a challenge on Instagram called Read, Write, Plan. And that's R-E-A-D, read, write with W-R-I-T-E, plan. You can go hashtag read, write, plan to find that on Instagram. It's me and my colleague, Alexandra Houghton. And we started a few years ago because it's kind of like back to school season. Everyone's got new notebooks and pens and papers and really we just kind of wanted to spy on what our favorite friends and authors and planners are doing with their notebooks and and calendars so if you love books if you love planning um if you just want to kind of like i said spy on people's calendars <laughs> go to instagram and check that out follow along or uh it's not too late to to get started to join in the fun hashtag read write plan we have tons of very cool planner and writer type people participating and we'd love to have you join us Okay, um, another quick announcement. I am going to be at, in Houston at a book signing at the bookstore called Murder by the Book. I will be there October 13th, 2018, um, signing books and discussing books with author Diane Mills. She's also a romantic suspense author. And if you are in the area or will be in the area that day, I would love to see you. Um, and I would love for you to drop on by the, a great independent bookstore. I had a signing there for Sisterhood is Deadly a few years ago. I'm sort of debating on how to turn this into an episode for the podcast, but I haven't quite figured it all out yet. I'm not sure I'm tech savvy enough to do it. If you would like to order a copy of The Royal Runaway from an independent bookstore, Murder by the Book is a great one to do it from um, because I'll be there and you can support them and you can support them bringing in um, <laughs> awesome authors like myself. Uh, the information on how to order the book is on their website, uh, murderbooks.com, and I will be putting it up on all my social too. And maybe if you ask nicely, you'll be able to get a signed copy because if it's if the orders are in, I will um, be able to sign them while I'm there on October 13th. So just wanted you all to know about that. And this week's guests are, is Christina Lauren. I always get weirded out when I have to talk about, um, I know they're two people. It's, it's two authors and they write under one name, Christina Lauren. And so when I was writing up all the show notes and stuff for this, I'm like, Christina Lauren are, Christina Lauren is, uh, it's Christina Lauren is. So this week's guest is Christina Lauren there. I did it. It still feels weird. Um, I've had them on my guest wish list for a while and they do not disappoint. This was a really fun episode to do. Their latest book is coming out this week. It's called Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. And you will hear me gush and ra rave, not rant, rave all about this book um, during the podcast. But I'm telling you again, up front, this is a wonderful book. It will be in my top 10, if not top five for the year. I loved it. Five stars, two thumbs up, women with books, book club, seal of approval. Um, go buy it now if you want a, a truly feel good romantic comedy. It's so fabulous. Uh, and now you can hear from yourself, uh, for yourself, the interview with Christina Lauren. I want to welcome today to Women With Books, Christina Lauren, who are also known as Christina Hobbs and Lauren Billings. Welcome, guys. Hi, thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, so who's Christina? Raise your hand or say, hey. <laughs> Hi, this is Christina. Okay, and Lauren? This is Lauren. And I asked you before because everyone calls you Lo, so That's is right. it, and it's okay for me to call you that? I don't need to... Yeah, of course. It's actually okay. weird when people call me Lauren. I know that I'm either in trouble or they don't know me very well. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
<laughs> and Christina, what do I call you? Can I call you Christina? Or do you have like a another name? <laughs> um, so Christina, you'll hear Lo calls me PQ. Um, okay. But so if she says PQ, you know that's who she's talking about. Okay, it's not like secret twin language. No, no, no. no. Just, her her hair is always perfectly done, and so I call her prom queen. So it just it stuck. So we call her PQ now. That's very Most, cute. See, I was thinking like perfectly coiffed. I'm like, no, that doesn't start with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually most of our like friends call me PQ. That's how I always mm-hmm. know like it's a fandom friend or something. Yeah. Cute. Well, you guys are, uh, of course, they, what do you call yourselves? Co-writers or writing team? What's the correct nomenclature here? We just say co-authors, but okay. I mean, it, it also can be anything because we're also best friends and, um, you know, business partners and all of that so practically well, I married s- yep seriously i want to start off at the beginning for those who don't know the mythos of christina lauren <laughs> um how did the two of you meet and start writing together um so this is christina uh so we met in 2009 we were both writing fan fiction and lo was putting on hosting a panel at san diego comic-con on fan works and I had a story at the time that was popular so she invited me to come out and that was the first time we met in person and we just liked each other so much that we started talking nonstop and decided to write something together so we wrote like a a little fan fiction one shot that was really fun and then we just decided to do it again and try to write a book Right, because after you write enough fan fiction, you're like, dang, that's a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we were like, let's write a book. Like, it's super easy. And it was not. <laughs> which, um, which it was the Twilight fandom? Is that mm-hmm. correct? That's where we met. Although we were writing in different fandoms, um, that's sort of what we're mostly known for, is the oh. Twilight fic. Mm-hmm. What, do, you, do you talk about the other ones? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was, we did Harry Potter. I had some Hunger Games fic. My, I really cut my teeth back in the day on, like, Alias and Buffy fandoms, but I will admit that my very first fan fiction was written at the age of 14 about Days of Our Lives. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Okay, Tom, I have to know, who are the characters in your Days of the Lives? Was it, like, Bo and Hope? It or? was Patch and Kayla. Patch and Kayla. <laughs> that really, like identifies to me like a very subset of people who <laughs> know I don't their even days know who of they their are. <laughs> you would recognize them if you saw them because they were on all of the soap opera digest when you would check okay, out okay. the grocery store yeah do you still watch days no i mean i think i stopped like part way through high school it's been forever <laughs> i think i went through college because that was actually how i knew people in my dorm. I was assigned to an upper class dorm when I was a freshman, so <laughs> everyone wasn't very friendly. But I would go down to the T V lounge and Days of Our Lives and Young and the Restless and and everyone would go down there to watch these shows. Yeah. That's <laughs> so, so funny. I know. I, I, I still, loved them. I still remember the day that John Abbott kissed oh, what was the maid's name? Ma no, it wasn't Mamie. Something like that. And, like, everyone was like, what? <laughs> Scandal. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, well, I mean, going back to those days, 2009, the Twilight fandom worlds and all the Harry Potter worlds, I mean, were just crazy. Mm-hmm. And maybe they still are. I'm not sticking my nose in there anymore. But do you ever miss all that, like, the community? And, and Oh, for sure. Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things that kept us there, we all come to the fandom for different reasons. People will come into a fandom because they want more of the characters or they didn't like a turn in the story and they want to do it themselves or, you know, for a million reasons. But um, once you're there, for the most part, at least for us, the community was what really kept us. But luckily, you know, a lot of the Twilight community has followed us, not followed us, but accompanied us or been there too into the book world. So yep. there are so many writers that have gone into publishing from that fandom. I mean, it was just rich with talent. And it really was. And yeah. I, 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 people keep coming out of the woodwork. I just saw something else on Facebook the other day. Someone's like, oh, I used to write, you know, Roswell fic back in the day. And, mm-hmm. and it's really interesting to see how many people just were empowered, really, to start yeah. putting out their own mm-hmm. stories that Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Yep. That's um, true. 
what fandom, if you were getting started today, if you were a 19 year old college kid or whatever, what fandom would you write in today? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am a huge like BTS lover right now, like K pop, but I, I don't think I would write fic because it's RPF and that's a little different, but that's sort of my like fandom quote unquote now. So, yeah, I would for, probably like, be a, writing like Akotar. Like, oh, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, the K-pop thing is a whole different world that I have definitely, I don't know, I can't get into, but I was just at dinner the other night with some women and they were all like going, they were going crazy about it. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, but maybe I should be. <laughs> I love I it. Like it's it, fun. It, it snags some people for sure. I mean, when, you know, Christina and I will go and talk to different people, have different meetings, and invariably somebody in the room is like, oh my God, me too. And it's never who you expect. You know, it's not necessarily the 18 year old or, you know, whatever. Sometimes it's the 50 year old mom or, you know, like a dude. <laughs> it just, it like feels like it catches everybody. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just so um, like bright colors and sparkles and fun music. And, you know, it's fun. And it makes you feel good. I know y'all were at Comic Con this summer, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. So you still keep connections there. What What were y'all promoting or doing down in San Diego? Well, I um, um I do some of the book programming with Comic Con. We have some book panels that I organize every year. I've been have been doing it for about eight years now. So before I just went as a fan, but now. I organized the What's Hot in Young Adult Fiction panel, which this year was called We Read YA. And then I also tend to organize some industry panels. This year it was a panel called From Idea to Hired, um, which has had a really awesome panel of agents, editors, um, pu- uh, producers from Hollywood, film agents, um, book to film people. So it kind of, if you wanted to get your screenplay seen or your book published, um, it had everybody that you would need to talk to. That sounds like and a I have to say, resource. I don't, I don't put the panel on. I just sit there and listen and watch Lo kind of do stuff. But it would have been exactly what we would have been looking for when we were querying because mm-hmm. the ask an agent is like you get to go up and ask an agent a question. And you know when you're querying, you just feel like you're throwing your query out into a, the void. And so it's so nice to have like just a few seconds to hear everything that they have to say. Well, that's a really good segue actually into my next question, which was after 22 books, and I think I counted that right. Y'all might need to correct me on that. Um, what advice would you give to a young writer who is starting off today and dipping their toe in fic or publishing? You know, it's so funny because I feel like the advice that we would have given a couple years ago is so different from the advice that I would give just today in this minute. I feel like there's so many... Um, different forces of influence right now, whether it's social media or other people's books or the television, because TV is such a strong storytelling force right now, that if once you have your idea and your book and you're, you're ready to go, try and just stay too, true to that. You know, put your head down and write it, because I feel like there's so many things telling you what to write and how to write it that that kind of pressure needs to come after the book is written when you're editing. Mm -hmm. Um, Get your ideas down and then send it out to people and have people that you trust to give you really truly critical feedback that you can hear, um, give you feedback, you know, get diverse pre-readers, get people who come from different backgrounds and have had different experiences to read it. Um, But when you're in that writing stage, I feel like there's every day you know, there's different things happening and different conversations happening in publishing, and it it would be really stressful to try and follow all of that and keep writing. So just Uh put your head down and write your book. Yeah, I think that maybe that's one benefit of going, starting off with fan fiction, Mm -hmm. is is you do get that feedback and a diverse community. I mean, you might not know who's out there, but that's exactly it. I mean, you could be people of all ages and all creeds and nationalities that are reading you and giving you feedback Mm -hmm. and a little bit of a blind feedback I guess but at least they're giving you encouragement and stuff we always say to you we could not have done this and handled reviews and criticism and all of those things and even just interacting with readers on a daily basis if we had not learned how to do it 
in fandom. We -hmm. call it fandom boot camp. And it basically just teaches you like how not to show your ass online and Mm -hmm. (laughs) how to take criticism and take it constructively and also how to decide the criticism that you do take and then the stuff you kind of just like let go. Yep. One of the things... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was was just going to say like people, you know, authors who go on Goodreads and read reviews that are critical and it's hard for them. Um, I mean, first of all, Goodreads isn't for authors, it's for readers, you know, although we can be engaged with readers on there. I think they try and do it in a way that kind of shields us from some of the harsher reviews. But I mean, if you think Goodreads is rough, like try going into a fandom (laughs) because people don't pull punches and they, Uh -uh. you know, it's, it's very anonymous and they give their opinion without any sort of filter. And it was really good for us, you know? Um, So it taught us how to kind of be a little thicker skinned and to know when not to respond to stuff. And I think for any new author, that's really good experience to have is no matter how much you want to do it, do not reply to any negative feedback online. Do you miss people like sending you requests or going, write this one or do this with this person? I don't think we do just because we still have that. <laughs> we have, I mean, and I don't, and I don't mean that to sound like, you know, assy. I just, there no, are people no. who want us to write Chloe and Bennett until we're 90 years old. And so we do get people saying, please write this or give us a book for George or, you know, give us a book for this person. And so it is nice to have that. Um, I think what we miss is the immediacy of the feedback because as it is now, we'll, write a chapter and I'll send it to Christina and she'll be like, oh, I love this or whatever. But it's different when it's the two of us where we're sort of, you know, like platonically married and her feedback is exciting to me, but it's different than having, you know, 500 people reply like, oh my God. Yeah, you yeah. Know? So I think we do miss the immediacy of the like community feedback. Mm-hmm. Now you guys, obviously you keep talking about being platonically married your co-authors you're famously quite close and best friends i've seen you um let's see in dallas y'all were at buns and roses a few years ago it might have been three years ago or so and um you you can just tell you're tight you're tight symbiotic (laughs) people (laughs) have you ever had a fight about your books or your stories i mean we so we i swear i think we probably get asked this more than anything except how do we write (laughs) Um, we, of course we argue, like, um, I remember Lo one time saying, you know, you wouldn't want to be in a relationship with somebody that you didn't feel like you could fight with. And so we argue about stuff all the time or get on each other's nerves all the time, but it's always like such simple things. Like I would say to my husband or my sister or, you know, that kind of thing. We never argue about the books. Normally, if we ever have any, you know, sort of difference of opinion, it's because one of us, usually me, is not on the same page, like has not read something or has forgotten a conversation we've had or something. And if it's not, and if it's we just see something differently, we like we have like a veto. Like, I, I think we always say like we have one, but if there was something that we were like, no, I do not agree with this, we would obviously sit and listen and talk it out. But anytime we've ever saw something differently, it's so easy to fix because it's not an ego thing. It's not a, I'm right and you're wrong. It's a, oh, right. You know what? Actually, I didn't see it that way. Or, you know, that's the way it should be for the characters. It's never, we've never argued about a book. Because it's all about making the book better, right? Yeah. So like, there's never going to be somebody sitting out there, even the person who knows us better than anyone. There's never, that person is never going to be sitting there going, "Mm, I I bet in this chapter, this is where Lauren won a battle with Christina over something. You know what I mean? They're not going to be able to tell. It's like the whole point is that the book is, is smooth and reads well and polished and whatever gets us there is what's right for it. So it's, we're really lucky. I don't think it's always this easy in a writing partnership. I mean, I I, I feel like some stars aligned for this in some way, because it's a really perfect combination of personality between the two of us and drive and you know just strengths I mean we just have like really complementary strengths so yeah well I apologize for asking the question I didn't know it was the most oh common gosh, question no, no. ever oh my gosh no <laughs> no no it's, no. Just, it's so fascinating for me as an author to talk to other people who are co-authoring because on the one hand it looks so great you know working with your best friend and um getting work done twice as fast <laughs> And, you know all this stuff but at the same time I just I can't I've never done it before and I can't even imagine like the, 
to share the the thoughts and the worlds that are inside my head with someone else. I'm like, oh, how does that happen? I swear it's like some sort of magic. Like it's our superpower is being able to write together because we have friends who have tried and it has ended in disaster. And I can't imagine doing it with anyone else. And Mm -hmm. I don't think Lo can imagine it either. There's just something about the way that our personalities fit. We're so different, but it just like works so perfectly. Yeah, and I think I think the reason it's a common question, and it wasn't a criticism at all. I, yeah, think, no, the reason no. it's, I think the reason it's common is because it does feel a little bit like, well, it can't be that easy. You know what I mean? And and when it comes from people in line who are having books signed, I think there's a little bit of like rubbernecking that's fascinating. Like, tell us, well, this looks really friendly. Tell us that it's not really like this. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I, I, you know, I can't, I mean, we, of course, like any relationship, we have hurdles that we have to get over, but they're not, they're not anything, you know, that would threaten like the partnership or the friendship. So like we truly love each other so much. Lo was just gone for almost two weeks, 10 days, something like that. And I drove five hours because she was in my state to like basically have dinner with her. And even though I had just Mm -hmm. spent a week with her a week before because we just genuinely love each other so much. Yeah. And that's what's so fascinating too is that, you know, you, knowing this about you guys and knowing that you're so close and your 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 careers are so tied up together that you don't live in a compound already. <laughs> so, I mean, where would you do you have you picked out your your 100 acres or <laughs> <laughs> where would it be if you were building the Christina Lauren compound? So I think that would be the situation where it wouldn't necessarily work. Um, Really? Yeah, only because I think we do really well when we're together and we're working on outlining things or talking through things. But when we're working, we're actually sitting down to work. We can't really be in the same space. (laughs) And that's just because, you know, we have different process. Like for me, I sit down and I, my hands hammer at the keyboard and I work for a solid few hours and then I get up and do something else. Whereas... For Christina, it takes her a little while to get into the flow of it. So she'll sit down and it won't be a couple hours until she's really hitting her stride. And so those two things don't work very well together. Um, And, you know, I mean, in terms of like being together all the time, we sort of are and that works really well. But I do think it works better for the writing partnership if we have different writing spaces. Yeah. But we still have friend stuff like I'm going to... LA this weekend and we're seeing Ed Sheeran together. So as much mm-hmm. as we work on the writing relationship, we spend just as much time on the bestie side of it too. Mm-hmm. We'll say hi to Ed Sheeran for me. We will. <laughs> yeah. we're just He'll be, be like, out. Yeah. Oh, great. Another middle-aged mom out there. <laughs> well, I want to congratulate you guys. So I did ask around and um, say, you know, as I always do, I'm like, hey, people, I've got, you know, Christina Lauren, what questions do y'all want? And everyone wanted to talk about Roomies, the movie. Uh-huh. Yeah. Congratulations. Yay. Thank you. Uh, for those that don't know, your book, Roomies, that was released last December, December That's right. 2017, December, yeah. is, is being turned into a movie, and you guys already wrote the screenplay, is that correct? We have the a draft, draft written. Okay, yeah. you, a draft. Well, that's mm-hmm. that's more than I've done. So <laughs> yeah. we're on our we're on our we're almost done with our first round of notes. Okay, um, and I know I think I read someplace that this isn't your first attempt at a screenplay. So is it more fun? Is it challenging? Like what what are y'all finding writing the screenplay and not the very long book? Um, so we. So Beautiful Bastard was optioned in 2013 or 2012, before it even came out. And they had a screenwriter and they wrote a script and the script was great, but then they felt that it had lost some of our voice. So they had us go in and do like a rewrite and a polish. And then they had us go back in and do more. And so we essentially like rewrote that script and that was really fun. But you know, that was starting with something and just like changing it. So this was different. This we had to completely start from scratch. So um, you have to write a treatment first, and the treatment is essentially like, it's like 8 to 15 pages, and it's basically every single thing that's going to happen in the movie. And I think that that's low superpower is writing treatments and synopsis and all that kind of stuff because she hammered, I swear, 90% of that out super fast. And once you have that treatment, and I think ours was 15 pages, 
it is it was so easy to go in and just like write the script um we had so much fun doing it and we've also written a pilot for beautiful bastard that we are working on for television but the movie and that feel so different in the process um it was it was just so fun i think at the end we looked at each other and we're like did we actually just write a movie script i can't believe that we did that <laughs> in like three weeks i think mm-hmm. yeah because it's so different and i i mean i can't even I've, I've looked into it a few times just because I wanted to do like, um, this is dumb, but like snippets of a, of a script in a book. And of course, then if you want to just do like five lines and you have to like go buy a whole book and do research on that. Right, exactly. <laughs> so of course I have to get it right. But I was, I was so intimidated by that process. So um, that's really awesome that you guys have been able to um, you know, adapt it. And to do your own though is like, do you... Do you worry that you're leaving, like, I mean, do you stress out about what parts you're leaving out? Because you can't put every single thing in the screenplay. I think sort of by definition, the movie should be really different. And I think there are some people in the romance world who probably will push back against that because we as romance readers, and I include myself in this aspect of it, really want to see the books that we love faithfully adapted. You know, when we're talking about adapting The Hating Game, for example, like, there are aspects of Josh and Lucy that I really want to be captured just as they are in the book. And it would be hard for me if they weren't captured that way. But I also have perspective now that books and movies are such different mediums that you really can't adapt a book like line by line into a movie. It, it doesn't work. And many times, and this is not a criticism of romance in general, but romance stories tend to be a little bit smaller in their scope because their focus is a relationship. And if you adapt that the way it is, from the book directly into a movie, it'll feel a little navel-gazy. Um, so when you're adapting something to make it into a film, I think you have to expand the world a little bit. And part of that is fleshing out secondary characters. Um, for the sake of, in the case of Rumi's, you know, a lot of that is building up the Broadway world to make it feel a little bit more vibrant and musical. Um, but we have made other changes too. Um, And we talked about this a little bit recently, which is changing the main male character, which in the book is Calvin McLaughlin, and in the movie is going to be Mateo Perez. And we made that change in part because it really did start to feel like the story of an Irish, a white male immigrant coming to the U.S. and having difficulty there. It just, it felt a a ring a little bit false to us. Um, Mm. And it also seemed like we had an opportunity to embrace a platform that we have and to speak to some of the social issues that we're facing as a country, um, that it is much harder for somebody with brown skin to get into this country legally. Um, and so I think there are some readers who will miss Calvin's accent, for example, in the book, you know, the fact that he says tink instead of think is something that a lot of readers really clung to and they loved about him. That will always be there in the book. That's never going to change. Um, but in the movie, you have a different male character who has different eccentricities and different things that make him swoony and lovable. And I think we're really, really excited about Mateo because he's become not just an edited version of Calvin. He is his own fully actualized person. And so that has been incredibly satisfying for us. I got a little chill when you were just telling me about that. I'm Mm -hmm. so excited that you have, not that I didn't love Calvin, but I'm, I can definitely see why you're making that change and yeah. I'm so excited to take that opportunity and and run with it both from a creative and a I mean I'll say political standpoint mm-hmm. um and political uh, with a small p <laughs> yeah I mean I, I I would take the big p as well I, I do feel like we're in a stage where if you don't use your voice whatever your voice is if it's quiet or loud if you don't use it for something good then you might as well be silent and um you know, in this case, I feel like this is a really important place to take a stand. So, I, I you know, at some point, um, I was talking about this change with somebody on the vacation, and they said, oh, so you're, you're going on to the, you know, the diversity bandwagon. <clears throat> and I said, well, oh. I mean, if we're talking about a bandwagon that is, like, full of people who want to be forward-thinking and progressive and, like, good humans and like, hell yes, like this is a bandwagon that I'm okay joining. And it it really isn't about getting onto a movement because it's trendy. It's about speaking your mind in a way that embraces who you are, who you've always been and how you want the world to be. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So we have an opportunity to do that, and it would be really irresponsible if we didn't take it. I love it. Um, that kind of changes my next question, though, because I was going to ask about, does everyone have an opinion about your casting? And now you've... <laughs> <laughs> You're like, how about that? No one can get in. <laughs> I, I actually um, think that's one of the reasons why we wanted to say something soon because we were getting a lot of emails and messages with casting ideas, and it was like, he's a great white Irish dude, but he's not going to work for this. <laughs> so we were sort of having to leave these cute tweets and emails hanging, and yeah, so. Now, and do do... I don't know how to put this. So when you, I know everyone wants to like suggest casting uh, ideas and then do you ever just go in your head like, oh God, no, like what are you thinking? <laughs> or is it just kind of interesting to see how everyone has um, interpreted your characters? I don't think it's ever a turn off for us. I never think we, I don't think we're ever like, oh God, that person does not fit because reading is so subjective, right? right. Yeah. I mean, when you're yeah. imagining a person like, if that's who you imagine, that's wonderful. I, it's almost even more fun if it's totally different than who we imagine because it just goes to show you like, that reading is completely, you turn over the story to the reader when you put the book out there. Yeah. So we love getting those. I thought it was really, I had a book once where everyone was like, oh, this, this guy is the, that character and this guy is that character. And I eventually like put up all of the pictures on Facebook and I was like, this is crazy. There's a huge, I mean, everyone was hot, but there's like the huge variety of what people thought was hot. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> was was really interesting. Um, so I'm having a problem. I don't know where to go next because you guys have so many books coming out. <laughs> so I'm going to go in order because the next book that's going to come out probably the week that I put this uh, episode out is Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating. Yes. And can I... I told, I told your publicist for y'all to prepare for this because now is the time where I'm going to gush. Mm. I have to tell you that I got an arc for this book and I was on my way to Denver for RWA. Late night flight. I mean, I was being cheap, so I bought like a 10 o'clock ticket to Denver. <laughs> and I'm on this dark plane going, what am I going to read? I'm going to read this new Christina Lauren book. And by the time I landed in Denver, I had tears streaming down my face. Aww. I got off. I got to the house where I was staying with some friends. And, I mean, they can tell you, I literally was like, okay, I'm tired. But this book, you guys, is so good. And I probably went around Denver to asking everyone, have you read this new book? Have you read this new book? It's so good. And I, so I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you all this because I'm not, I'm, I'm just... I wanted to have this interview. We'd been trying to schedule this interview for a while. And I, like that night, I was like, oh, if I could get them on the phone right now, this is what I would tell them. <laughs> it's so, so good. I laughed. I cried. I usually do not like um, friends to lovers tropes. Mm -hmm. But this one, oh, so good. So why don't you tell, now everyone wants to know about this book. So you tell them in your own words what this book is about. <laughs> okay. I'm terrible at summaries. I'm going to let Lo <laughs> tell the summary. <laughs> I'm terrible. I'll, I'll jump in. I'll jump in. <laughs> um, so Josh and Hazel's Guide to Not Dating is out September 4th, and it is the story of um, <clears throat> Josh and Hazel, who knew each other briefly in college. Hazel is and was at the time sort of this wild, lovable, hot mess who just saw Josh as this perfect guy and she just assumed, sort of without internal conflict, that she would be completely undateable in his eyes. But she still wants to be his friend. So when they run into each other again about seven years later, and she finds out that Josh is the brother of her sort of new close friend where she's teaching, um, she decides that she's going to make him her best friend and they're going to hang out because she just is sort of a puppy and she really adores him and thinks he's really amazing. Um, and... Josh's relationship falls apart. He sort of has a hard time getting back on his feet. And so Hazel is there to say, let's go on blind double dates together. And I'll set you up with somebody and you set me up with somebody and it'll be super fun. And of course, most of the dates are disasters. But in the process, Josh and Hazel become very close, even though they are absolutely not dating each other. So it's very sweet. <laughs> and I can honestly say that we had so much fun writing this book. Like, so much fun writing this book. This is a perfect example. 
of why we love doing what we do because being in this book every time we had to work on it, whether it was for drafting or edits or line edits or copy edits or past pages, was just such a joy. You know, we just couldn't help but feel really good about it. So I'm really glad that you enjoyed it. That makes me really happy. I did. And I just got like emotional again, just hearing you say that. (laughs) And I don't even know. And I, and I, you know, again, I, w- I read this right before a writing conference. I'm talking with writing friends and I'm trying to explain like why this works for me and other friends to lovers books don't. And I, I don't know. I, th- I think you just made these characters like I fell in love with them and you can really see it wasn't like, like they just were these real people that, um, that they loved each other before it was like almost romantic love mm-hmm. and so that was like a, a beautiful step along the way that they were truly truly best friends and you could see their best friends it wasn't just like so i guess maybe i'm not i, don't I think it's because in a lot of and i've seen this in reviews a lot of people when you read friends to to lovers one person is already in love with the other yes. but they're just best friends you don't actually see like a true genuine friendship but josh and hazel they just truly love each other as friends like she's crazy and wacky and isn't going to change and he loves her that way anyway as a friend until one day he realizes she realizes that it's more Mm -hmm. and also there's no like there's no slutty dude that she's been in love with forever that like calms his slutty dude ways just because he (laughs) falls in love with her like neither of them changes who they are for each other yes you know they come together and um, spoiler, and uh, and it, and it works because <laughs> because they already love each other for exactly who they are. And I think you know one of the things that was really fun in writing it was <clears throat> the reality that both of them are totally open to the idea of the other person. That's never a question. They're never telling each other like, I don't want to like this person. This person isn't right for me. The problem is usually with Hazel, sort of innocently and rightfully thinking like, I'm not a good fit for him because. I know myself, I know my past relationships, and I'm a lot to take. And, like, I th- don't think that's a good fit for Josh. So I do sort of love that they're both open to it. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's no, like, player dude that has to, like, keep, his, keep it in his pants. And they the really new, um... want each other to be happy no matter mm-hmm. what, even if it's not them. I also mm-hmm. thought that was really touching. Like, if you want to go back to your old boyfriend or your old girlfriend – then I want that for you, even though I'll be here crying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh, it was just so good. So oh, thank, thank you, you, and thank you for writing it, and thank you to uh, Gallery Books for letting me have that arc. And I'll <laughs> be plugging it. Oh, I'm so glad it. you loved yeah. it. Yeah. That was so good. So then I realized you have another book. This is, okay, you guys have like six books out a year, so it's <laughs> not anymore. Three. That was the first year that was, <laughs> okay. nearly killed us. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. felt like I felt like all this year people were like, "Did you read this one by Christina Lauren? Did you read this one?" And I'm like, "No, my God, when is it going to stop?" <laughs> no. Never. <laughs> I just got through one and then they're like this one's really good so I do have to say like I missed one this year because you know I'm just reading other books and um so but everyone I know loved um love in other words that's right okay yeah everyone I know was reading that and recommending it to me and I was like I'm just getting done with roomies hold on on." (laughs) then, then I decided to skip ahead to Josh and Hazel so now I feel like I'm prepared for the one due in December, which is my favorite half night stand. Is that correct? Yep, that's yes. right. Okay. Oh, I typed it in too. earlier and I wrote my favorite halftime stand, which <laughs> I was like, is this a football romance? <laughs> okay. That doesn't sound like CeeLo. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, huh, interesting. I wonder what a halftime stand is. Um, anyway, so why don't you tell us about my favorite halftime stand, half night stand? <laughs> Uh, okay should I try and do this one you can do it okay so a half night stand in like dating online sort of lingo is when you like sleep with somebody but you don't stay the whole night you like leave you know like halfway through or something so this is about I just have to interject like how much I love like either of us explaining any kind of any dating lingo single life dating lingo you sounded really good at it because I can't so I'm like oh they sound like they know what they're talking about we did our research research, but 
Chris okay, just so like this... reads note card. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> so this is about Millie and Reed. So they are professors at um, a college. Which college is it, Lo? <laughs> <laughs> It's in Northern California. It's, no, it's not. It's like Central oh. Coast. It's UC Santa Barbara. Oh, my God. You're so cute. Okay, okay. <laughs> and so it's Millie. It's Millie and her, like, four bestie friends. And they're all just, like, the best friends, but all of them are sort of terribly, tragically single. So their college is going to have this huge event. Um, Obama is coming to speak. And um, so they all decide that they want. they need to have a date. Um, so in order to get this date, they decide to all join a dating service. And so they all do their, they all do their, um, profiles. Millie writes all of theirs and she writes hers, but Millie's is terrible, um, because Millie is great at basically telling you nothing. Um, so hers (laughs) is sort of just terrible and she gets nothing but a bunch of dick pics. Um, so she decides to, um, well, wait, see, (laughs) forgot part of it (laughs) she decides to do another profile where she becomes Catherine um and doesn't tell anybody and then when uh she goes to look at her matches she has matched with reed her best one of her best guy friends and also the guy that she had a half night stand with at the beginning of the book yes yes and they decided to stay friends they're not going to mess it up you know they have this insane night but they're better off just friends um, but the thing is, is that they always joke that um, Millie is not good at like, she, you know, she's funny and she's great and they love her. They're best friends, but she's not good, you know, getting deep and telling you things that are, you know, under the layers. But through Catherine, she's able to. So when she matches with Reed, she's able to be so much more intimate and open with him than she is as Millie. And so then you have to see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> So it's obviously another romantic comedy. Yes. 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 Okay. Well, and I this can't one is wait. fun because it has a really fun cast of characters like Millie and the four guys. It's, it's just a nice little flipping the f- sort of emotionally intuitive female trope on its head where it's like these four guys that are trying to get Millie to talk about herself more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, that sounds so cute. Have y'all ever um, helped a friend write an online dating profile before or, or do anything like that? I, I have. have. Um, of course. I, yeah, nobody would ask me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm very milly in that way. <laughs> well, I've been Which is something for I learned years. in this book. Yes. I've been married for years and someone was like, tell me if this sounds like me. I'm like, wait, what? No, I can't. I'm like, this is weird. Don't put this. And I don't know. It was just an awkward like thing looking into someone's um, life, but... I don't think it worked. I think they should have taken my advice. <laughs> <laughs> so when do um, early advanced copies go out on that? I mean, they should be coming soon because we mm-hmm. just got the pass pages for it. So okay. usually around the time we get the first pass pages is when they start binding up some galleys. Well, I will, so start, I'm making my, I will start sending some emails out so yeah. I can make sure because I cannot wait. It, you know, what's always fun for me is seeing, like, because we usually get emails from people on our publishing team or friends of them or whoever has early copies, bloggers, whatnot, that where people are like, okay, this one, this one was my favorite. And so, you know, obviously we did get a lot of those for Josh and Hazel because I think it is an objectively adorable story. But it it is also interesting to see that we're starting to get some rolling in for a half night stand where people are like, holy crap, like, I feel like you've described my life with this book. And, <laughs> yeah. and, I, and, and it feels good. It feels good to be able to hit different strengths with readers with different books and to see that books are objective or subjective and that you're not always going to relate to one as strongly as you do the other but like every book has those core people that just really kind of glom onto it and that's kind of cool so mm-hmm. that is really cool especially when you publish six books a year no and, it's not uh, it's like three <laughs> yeah we did do, we did six books our very first year that was 2012 right no 2013 I know um, that it's technically been three in 2018, but with Roomies coming out last December, I'm just yeah. saying. If, yeah, that's no. true. It's, it's, it is like four and it, it is like four and 12 months, I guess, technically, because it's like a day before. So um, 2019, be how many books are coming out in 2019? I think we have three, right? What? There I might be, so. there's certainly two, because we have the one in the, the May that we haven't talked about, and then there's the one we're working on now. And then we just turned in proposals, and one of those, so I'm sure, will be. Yeah. 
Okay, seriously, how long does it take y'all to write a book? It totally depends on the book. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, like, Dating You, Hating You, we worked on that for, like, a year and a half. Wow. And Love and Other Words, we worked on for about a year. Okay. But that was an idea that we'd had, like, seven years before, you mm-hmm. know? Whereas Autobiography, we had that idea a really long time ago and weren't quite sure what shape it would take but then when we actually outlined it and s- then we finally sat down to write it it took us 63 days that's it yeah it feels like these should all be like 63 days yeah. <laughs> that's, <I'm, laughs> that's that's probably another reason why people are always asking you like how it works because i mean you're just incredibly prolific and good at what you do so that's probably why we're all trying to dive in and see what the secrets are but um, <laughs> do you have time to read with all of the writing that you do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's funny because, um, you know, we were just driving back from Wyoming this weekend, and I read three books in two days, and it was awesome, you know. I don't know how yeah. she reads while she's in the car. <laughs> Yeah. Some people, yeah, I can, but one of my daughters cannot, which yeah. I feel very sad Ugh. for her. I'm lucky. I lucky. I'm lucky that I don't have any of that like um, motion sickness stuff. So, but, yeah. what have y'all been reading lately? What have you been recommending, or what's what's on the TBR list, or what should uh, be on our TBR list? Um, I'm reading. I'm reading China Rich Girlfriend, okay, which is the second book to Crazy Rich Asians. Mm-hmm. I read How to Walk Away. Um, I think it's by Catherine Hand. I think that's her name. Let me make sure. Um, and I loved it. I loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, oh, Catherine Center. I don't know why I said Hand. Catherine Center. I knew it was like a word. Do you know what I mean? Like her <laughs> last name was a word, not a like name name. Um, so yeah, How to Walk Away by Catherine Center. Totally adored it. Um, what genre is kind of, that? It's I would say general fiction, but I would say it's like romantic fiction. Um, there's not a lot of like smutty parts. Um, there's great dialogue, really good tension relationship. I love the male hero. I feel like he's he's this awesome grumpy Scottish dude, and it's just fantastic. Um, so I really liked that one. Mm, you had me at grumpy Scottish dude. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's what I would recommend right now. When people ask you guys for book recommendations, is there an author or a book that you always recommend? It's sort of I think we're usually what like, what are you looking for? for? Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, people have such different tastes. I think if they're like, I really need a good contemporary romance, we would tell them to read The Hating Game. We tell them to read The Kiss Quotient. We tell them to read anything by Alice Clayton. Um, and if they want, like, paranormal, we tell them Cressley Cole. If they want fantasy, we tell them to read The Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. If they want YA, or if they just want a generally good, feel-good book, we tell them to read Jandy Nelson because she'll rip you apart but then put you back together and you'll be stronger than you were before. Mm-hmm. Um, so it really just depends. Yeah. What book or genre would people be surprised that you guys like? Um... Oh. I love horror and like mysteries. Those are probably my favorites. Yeah, I'd be surprised by that. I don't know why. <laughs> because I think your books are so um, generally not horrible. Yeah. <laughs> Full of horrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like there's no like hint of opening a closet and finding like a poltergeist in it or anything. I think because my, my favorite things are those moments where... Um, like you shouldn't necessarily be scared but you know nobody nobody's saying anything scary it's just the tension is so thick and you know those are those moments that make where I can't put down a book mm-hmm. if somebody can make me scared by just words then like I'm totally hooked so what about you Lo would, would um, people be surprised by you she reads everything yeah I don't know that I, I don't know that people would be surprised that I read nonfiction. I really do love nonfiction. um and I've sort of gotten back into, like, a love for vacation reads. Like, for me, a vacation read, because romance is vacation read for a lot of people, but romance for me is an everyday read. So, like, a vacation read for me is, like, a thriller, you know, like, or, a, you know, sort of, like, in the vein of old school John Grisham, where there's, like, a clock ticking and somebody's stolen the files. And you know what I mean? That kind of thing. <laughs> I think those are pretty fun. Um, but I'll read anything. Honestly, I love fantasy. I love 
paranormal romance. Um, so. She reads a lot of literary fiction. Yeah, I do. I like a lot of literary fiction, too. That was sort of where I was raised. Like, I think my parents were always a little horrified when I would go to the half price bookstore and get Danielle Steele instead of like Barbara Kingsolver but I would get Barbara Kingsolver too you know what I mean I think it was just wanting to have like the fantasy reads and also the reads that I felt like made my world bigger so that's beautiful y'all mentioned it before and I I didn't do a follow-up but um television I feel like y'all would probably be really into different shows is there what do y'all like to watch or am I wrong Um, about that no no not at all (laughs) I'm like a big Walking Dead fan. There's that Um, horror creeping in. (laughs) You know what I think? It's because it's atmosphere. So the things that I love, the zombies are like the least interesting part of The Walking Dead for me, which is why I think I liked The Walking Dead more in the beginning because it's more about the atmosphere and the way that people adapt to what's happening. Um, I'm not as big a fan of it right now. We'll see. Mm. But... Yeah, I've been um, watching Handmaid's Tale. My husband finally watched the first season, so we've been watching the second season together, which is awesome and also horrifying because it feels, like, too real. <laughs> um, but also, I've been watching Younger, which I everybody has telling me been telling me to watch Younger for so long because it takes place in the publishing world. So everyone in my, you know, like, local life is like, have you seen Younger? It's in publishing. And I'm like, no, I haven't watched it yet. Um <laughs> But I I love it. It's, like, so adorable, and it's cracky. It's sort of, like, I don't know. It's really fun, and um, it is. I like to watch, like, a couple episodes at night and just, like, hang out in bed. But those are the ones I'm watching now. My husband watches everything, and then I kind of make him distill it down. Like, what do you think I would really like? (laughs) So there's, like, true crime stuff, like The Staircase. I don't know if anyone's seen that, but it's amazing. And um, I think Real Genius is what it's called. It's about this sort of, like crazy crime spree in Pennsylvania that happened when my my husband was actually a kid in Pennsylvania so I don't know there's all kinds of good stuff I feel like TV is such a great medium for storytelling right now that you just Mm -hmm. there's it's so there's so much going on there it's so rich yes I've been watching a show called Sideswiped on YouTube I got YouTube red so there's like no commercials anymore and it is so funny so funny it's like it reminds me of like one of Lo and I's books or something but like on YouTube I don't think I heard you say anything about this. I'm going to write this down. I think I started watching it while you were gone. Is it romantic comedy or just a comedy? Yeah, yeah. So, like, it opens. It's, like, her 35th birthday, and she's single. Oh, you know, she and her uh, sister sets her up on a dating service. So it's just, like, it's just funny, and, you know, they're a little older, and it's really funny. The first scene, she's, like, in a gynecologist's office. She does her, like, yearly exam on her birthday, and her normal doctor is not there. And it's this guy who's reasonably attractive. And the nurse is like, oh, I forgot this thing. And leaves them while she's in there with, like, the speculum. Like, it's in there open. Oh, and they're just like, so. And she hasn't waxed. And so there's this whole, like, awkward conversation. It's funny. I had, Can people watch that if they don't have YouTube Red? Uh, I don't know, actually. Or do we have to do, like, the seven-day free trial and, I don't know. and download I don't everything? Know. <laughs> It's, oh, it's a YouTube original, so you might oh, have to. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. But it's well, just so great. Is... There's so many places to watch TV right now. There really is. And we cut cable um, last year. And even then, I still feel like I, I could watch something every day and just on Netflix alone or Hulu. Well, I saw this study that said that kids are watching half as much TV. And I was like, well, that's because they're looking at their phones. Yeah. Because they can, like, watch TV on their phone and read on their phone and do everything on their phone. My kids are on YouTube. That's that's their thing. Okay, and I have I don't to tell you guys it. this because I'm cracking up. So my daughter came okay. downstairs, and she knows that we're recording, and so I, like, put it on mute. And so she, <laughs> she, she wanted to get ice for her water. So instead of, like, just holding the cup up to the ice maker, she held her hands like it would be quieter. <laughs> <laughs> it's like grinding ice noise falling into her hand. I'm like, I think you're missing the point. <laughs> She's eight. <laughs> yeah, it was really, it was really cute. Anyway. <laughs> uh, well, I always close out the episode with the lightning round. Um, okay. But we have two of you here. So do you all want to, like, take turns answering? Like, I can go, Lo, Christina, Lo, Christina. How would that sure. be? Sure. Okay. Because I know people want to know the answers to the lightning round questions. Okay. Okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. 
Dark or milk chocolate? Low. Milk. Christina. Milk. Coffee or tea? Low. Tea. Christina. Coffee. When your phone rings, do you answer it? Low. No. <laughs> Christina. Yes. <laughs> You I answered them. if it's Christina. How's that? There you go. How do you normally waste time on the internet? Lo? Uh, shopping. Christina? YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter. On your, next, on your next vacation, will it be to the mountains or the beach? Lo? Mm, technically, it'll be mountains. Christina? I don't have a vacation planned, but if I did, it would be the beach. Okay. Is Christina getting an unfair advantage because she's got second? Maybe I should switch it around. No, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Do you call it soda or pop, Lo? Oh, my gosh. Soda. Christina? Soda. On a romance hero, do you prefer abs, forearms, or a chiseled jaw? Lo? Forearms. Christina? Jaw. <laughs> Are you more likely to buy a cup book cover with abs on it or a beach scene? Low. Ugh, um, neither. Mm. Neither. <laughs> Both of us, neither. <laughs> Is this why you guys are having such cute covers these days? You were like, no more abs. <laughs> I think well, we've never doesn't... had it. We've never I guess had you abs. haven't. No, you've no. had the suits. I think they work really well for some books. I just don't know that they would work well for our books. So that's why we tend to not, you know have those covers um but i would probably be more likely to buy a beach cover yeah although i do have to say when i think of josh from josh and hazel's guide to not dating i think of abs so. well you that's should fine with us <laughs> you should especially in the towel drop scene oh okay um <laughs> concentrate concentrate all right very important last question what are your feelings about turning to the last page of a book first low I think everybody should do what they need to do to get through it. <laughs> Christina. No I have absolutely done that before. <laughs> it's always so interesting to me. People do, um, people have like very strong feelings about that question both ways. So Yeah. I think sometimes it's like I've done it. I don't do it routinely, but I've done it. And in the times I have, it sort of takes the pressure out a little <clears throat> bit and then you can enjoy the journey. That's the main thing I've heard, especially with horror books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you can I wouldn't do it, it with a romance because no. we know romance is going to be fine. Yeah. Uh, no. And if you did it, guys, if you do this, don't do it for Josh and Hazel because the end is just like so much sweeter if you don't skip to the end. I'm just mm-hmm. saying. I I that's, that's my personal true. opinion. I would agree. As, as a book expert. Just trust us. We'll take you on a nice trip. It's not too angsty. No. no. Okay. And Lo wrote the epilogue. Like Lo wrote the Did epilogue really? and it is okay. the cutest thing I've ever seen. I had to Ooh, stay yes. up till like two o'clock in the morning. Like it was in Denver and I like I said, I'd flown there and I had to finish it and I stood stayed up and it was totally worth it. Yay. So there That's you go. awesome. Thank you guys so much for being on the podcast today and good Thanks luck with your us. next six books. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. I started this podcast so I could have the conversations I wanted to have about books. And by listening, you're part of the conversation too. Contact me on our Facebook page or on social media if you want to talk some more or sign up for the fantastic newsletter. And please leave me a review. Five stars if you love books. Thanks and keep reading.